we do not realize what the presence of God does to your mortal body. We always think about our spirits, our spirits, our spirits. Know ye not that your bodies are the habitation of the Lord. This literal body, this biological flesh houses the greatest divinity. Great men like John Lake understood and so they told that body because you carry divinity and you are the one I'm working with you are going to sit down in the secret place till you rub off that glory your spirit can interact but how about your body how about your body keep it under subjection sometimes you play a worship song and you just pray in the spirit so nama ye na nama ya shake it back up back up so pata many people are running let's do ministry god says come back don't go anywhere you are not going anywhere he's staying and you are just crying she na mo sata rekete de boko so bayara she no bo sumaya iba kande de bo so tana nama era no sumaya kania what mean at these things? The preparation for the glory. Many people who just stand up half baked and are struggling. The disciples, Jesus told them, Go. And they were six hours ahead of him. And he stood intercoursing with the Spirit. And after six hours, he got up. He didn't need a boat. He started walking on the water that was boisterous for others. And he was overtaking them six hours ahead many of you don't know why others are running the moment you want to run god says come down see that he said god but i'm more than this person he's not pride and god said i know you don't know where i'm taking you you don't know the challenges you are confronting you don't know what principalities you are confronting and the lord says stay stay there and you're building yourself building yourself after one year god has not said anything God, I'm always praying in the Holy Ghost. Where are you taking me? And God says, it's a mystery that only time will tell. Stay in the secret. It's the price for the glory. Every time you lift up your voice to worship, something in your spirit tells you this anointing is for the nations. One nation is too, this anointing is too much for one nation. One nation cannot survive this. But every time you want to step, there is a constraint. And sometimes even anointed men will say, Oh God, it's time. And God says, No, sir, remain. Are you getting blessed tonight? This is a real believers' meeting tonight. The prize for greater works. Then you remain in the secret. I'll be sharing in the last point what happens in the secret place. But the prize for intimacy. And under intimacy, two things praying in the spirit. I, I feel sad that people are still arguing about tongues and its relevance. I, I don't blame the people who argue it. I blame those who taught it. Those who taught it, taught it from a religious standpoint. Those who taught it did not understand the experience. They just received it. So they could not teach it. And they taught it as a Pentecostal experience. And so many people say, if it's a Pentecostal experience, I'm not interested. But come up here and I will show you. I said, I show you a mystery. many people have argued and have said ah tongues if you pray in tongues is there an interpreter i don't have time i would have shown you that what the bible calls the diverse kinds of tongues is not the same as the prayer language of tongues it's not the same very different the prayer language is god's empowerment to believers for intimacy first corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god intimacy in the spirit humanly speaking there is no mathematics that can add up how you'll be edified praying in tongues when you pray in tongues at the end of it all you are left with is you are tired religious people have pretended as if it's just a delicious experience it has not been so for me i don't know about you i will not tell lies love you just talk when you finish praying in tongues and you are serious about it you will need water you will need food It's a sacrifice. Somebody was asking me somewhere. He said, when he fasts, he's not hungry. I said, you're a liar. You better repent. What's the sacrifice if you are not hungry? 
Don't say God gave you ability and grace over it. Don't tell lies. When I fast, I'm seriously hungry. What is the constraint? That's where the maturity comes. That your body is saying, I want food. And you're saying, oh God, you are going to the nations with me. You better discipline yourself right now. So that we'll eat what is better than what you want to eat now. Discipline yourself for tomorrow. You say, I bring my body under subjection. There is nothing pleasant about paying the price. If you pay the price and you are laughing, it's not the price. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtlessly return. You only rejoice in the time of harvest, friends. You don't rejoice when you are sowing. Except it's not a precious seed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so praying in the spirit. Number two, staying in the atmosphere of his presence. Staying in the atmosphere of his presence. You see what this guy is playing? This is a language in the realm of the spirit like tongues. Although your mind does not understand it. But is doing something to your spirit. Because your spirit understands every language in the spirit. Paul said, if I speak with tongues of men, none of angels. So in the realm of the spirit, there are languages. Your tears are languages in the realm of the spirit. Your joy is a language in the realm of the spirit. Your hunger is a language in the realm of the spirit. Your laughter is a language in the realm of the spirit. Your cry is a language in the realm of the spirit. Instruments are languages. They speak a language your spirit understands. That's the reason why when service is about to start, people are talking. The moment the instruments start, there is a sense of decorum. There is a language that your spirit has received. When you lie down under this kind of atmosphere, we call it soaking in the glory. You just create that atmosphere and there is a portal that is open. You are not praying. You just sit still. The Bible says, be still and know there is a knowledge that does not come when you are busy it's only when you are still then you will know there is a dimension of knowledge that is imparted as you are still and so you stay in the spirit and there is worship what song is it there is no song this guy is just playing and you're just sitting down and your mortal body is drinking of the atmosphere of the glory your physical human body many of us just think about spirit 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 no don't leave your body behind you need it and so while you sit there you're just still one hour you're still meanwhile what is happening to your mind your mind is thinking about many things football indomie gala don't mind it just still your mind can think but you will not get it sit there you are in charge and you sit if you think you'll be interrupted by fruits so when your body is talking just bribe it with bite one apple and say oh yeah sit down don't laugh it's the price for the glory and you sit there and there is an intercourse when the presence of god shows up you know you know that i am is in this place then that scripture will be fulfilled that ye are come to Mount Zion. Zion becomes your habitation. And you are in the room but you know you are not alone. Suddenly you begin to sense that there are people with me in this room. I do not know but I know they are not angels. I can't tell. I'm not necessarily seeing a vision. But there is a perception that there is an intercourse going on here. Between the families of heaven and the families on the earth suddenly the word of the lord will begin to come you don't get the word it comes many people try to co ask god they say god is speaking god is not always speaking he speaks but he's not always speaking you've got to stay until the word comes